Well, are you ready for a change in your life? In her new devotional, Jean Watson brings a hopeful message that everything can change in 40 days. Jean, welcome to Real Life. Happy Thanks so much, you. Sydney. It's great to be here. You know what? I love this devotional so much because it's talking about change and just how to have transformation in your life. And you actually wrote this. God birthed this in your spirit after you did kind of an experiment with God. Can you share with us? I did. Well, I had been already in ministry for several years. And so I was traveling around the world, singing and playing my violin and speaking. But I was struggling still with um, areas of my life where I knew I wasn't in line with God's will. I wasn't living in daily peace and joy. Um, I was having struggles in my home. My oldest son was a drug addict. And so even as I prayed with people, I noticed that sometimes we were praying for things that I knew were God's will and yet we didn't see the answers that I was looking for. So I just began to ask the Lord, like, what am I missing? And um, in the midst of that, the Lord just showed me in his word that it was his will for me to be prospering. It was his will for me to be living in joy and to be seeing answers to prayer. And so I just, I just decided to try an experiment and I committed myself to stop trying to change myself and my circumstances, change other people, and just focus on him. And I just felt in my spirit to try to live a lifestyle of worship where no matter what was going on around me that my eyes would just be fixed on him. And as I did that, then all of a sudden things just started to change. And, and I discovered I was waking up with joy in my heart. I was feeling encouraged. I saw breakthrough in my family. My oldest son was delivered of his drug addiction. And I began to see answers of prayer just flowing where there had been struggle before. So I thought maybe I'm on to something here. That's really powerful because what I really love about your devotional is that you really show like where this is what the word of God says and to live out of that and from that. And I know for a lot of people when it comes to we hear the word worship, they think of just, oh, we're singing a song right. or lifting our hands. Yeah. But can you define how worship and having a different perspective of what worship is really leads to change? Right, I think to me, um, the attitude of worship is just putting him first in our thoughts and our actions, even in our emotions and just taking ourselves off the throne of our hearts and realizing it's not about me. And so worship is just when we exalt him in every situation. And when we do that, it just frees the Holy Spirit up to move in us and through us. And, and miracles can flow out of that. It's, it's um, just crazy and wonderful what happens when we put him at the front. I'm thinking of in the Old Testament, we saw those physical battles like King Jehoshaphat and the army of Judah and how they put the singers out in the front of the army and those spiritual strongholds were broken. And it's that principle that we're, we're not in war with flesh and blood. These are spiritual battles. So the only way to win them is through spiritual warfare. And that starts with worship. You know, I really love that you mentioned that story with King Jehoshaphat. That's one of my favorite Isn't stories yeah. about worship and just bowing down and just giving yeah. all praise to God in the midst of the things. And how, you know, certain when you're worshiping at certain times, what practical things when people are in the midst of worship, can they just do things to help break the bondage that they feel in their lives? Wow, that's a really good question. You know, for me, there have been times when in the middle of the night, I may have been struggling with fear or overcome with worry and anxiety. And the Lord just convicted me that those things are not as well for me. And so I'm a musician, so music just speaks to my heart. So I will literally just turn on worship music and it changes the attitude of my heart or even opening up the word and reading the truth because the devil gets us stuck in lies. It's all about lies or twisting the truth. And so sometimes we just need to get ourselves back in line with the word and say, wait a minute, this is the truth of what God says. And then we bring our minds into alignment with him. And then we're prepared for the change that he wants to bring. And if they bring up that point about the word and just yeah. how important it is to stand on the word of God and something when I was going through your devotional that when you wrote that it was like, oh, hit my spirit yeah. is just how, you know, the power of words yes. and just sort of the things that we say or speak around ourselves oh, yeah. and how you have wrote in your um, devotional that, you know, our words create worlds. Can you talk to us a little bit yeah. about that? Wow. Well, there's just something so powerful about breath and the words that come out of our mouths. God created the world by speaking it into existence. There's like breath that's moving something in the atmosphere. It's bringing 
heaven to earth as we speak it. And so when my kids were growing up, I was always speaking to them about their words, like speak life, speak life, because everything that comes out of our mouth is creating something. It's the breath of God in our bodies. And so it's a decision that we need to make um, to speak life, um, even if we might not fully believe it yet, just speak it by faith. And in my life over and over and over, I've seen the things that I speak in faith. Um, what I like to say is they become flesh. It's the word becoming flesh in our lives as we speak it. And I remember we were talking a little bit earlier, like um, in the green room, something that you shared was just about how you spoke, you know, life and spoke new words when it came to your son yes. battling with addiction. Can yes. you like share about a little bit of that? Absolutely. Well, the Lord had given me a word about him when he was two and a half years old that the zeal of God would consume him, it would burn within his soul, a driving force that could not be stopped, a fire that could not be quenched. And that was a song that I sang over him when he was a little boy. And I had no idea that I was actually doing warfare all those years when he was little. And then when he was a teenager and struggling with addiction, I remembered that's what God said about him. And the world said that he was a failure, he was gonna die in addiction. And I said, no. Um, this is what God said, that's what I choose to believe. And so in those darkest hours, uh, friends of mine and myself, we believed that word. We stood on it, spoke it, and we prayed and fasted for five days. And at the end of that five day fast, um, he had an encounter with God in our house in the middle of the night. And he went to bed high on cocaine and he woke up sober and on fire. The word had become flesh in his life. And um, to this day, he's free, he's on fire for God, and um, happily married and has three children. So That's pretty, he didn't die. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Yeah, like even, you know, it's encouraging for like parents, you know, Absolutely. to this whole principle of just speaking life and living your life out of worship to see change happen in your families. Yeah, well, when we know it's God's will, and I knew it was God's will for him to be free, then we have confidence that just like the Israelites painted the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lintels of their houses. And the word says that the angel of death passed over the houses. I believed, and I was a single mother of four kids living at poverty level. I mean, there was nothing, I had nothing of my own um, that I could lean on except the Lord. But I did believe that if I painted the blood of the lamb on my household, that the devil had no right to my kids. And so I just want to, I do want to speak to parents today yeah. that you have spiritual authority over your household. So take it, kick the devil out of your house. Just go after it in prayer. It's his will for them to be free and serving the Lord. That's so powerful because yeah. we have to take that authority. And that's yeah. like what changes go about. Go for it. And why would you say, Jean, you know, it's interesting, the whole like 40 days that yeah. anything can change. Why did you pick wow. 40? For your that happened as an afterthought. I was writing the book and which was a really painful process. I didn't want to do it. I'm a violin player. I'm not a writer. And yet God says, write down the things that you've seen and heard. Write down. People need to understand what I'm doing in the earth. And so I began to write and um, he showed me the number 40 over and over and over in the Bible that 40 was a number of transformation. Uh, Noah, you know, the flood for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus fasting in the desert. 40 years, the Israelites wandering for 40 years. And so I began to study the number 40 and discovered that it is the number of new birth and transformation. And get this, if you think about it, even it takes 40 weeks for a child to grow from an embryo in its mother's womb to a fully formed human being. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. There it is right yeah. there in science. So 40. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your labor of love with your devotional, Everything Can Change in 40 Days. But you also have something you want to share with our viewers about a video. Can you tell us a little bit about oh, that? Oh, yes. Well, recently I started working on a new music project, which was Ancient Hymns of the Church. And, and I discovered a really special song that was written in the 400s, 432 AD in Ireland. It's called St. Patrick's Breastplate. It was the prayer of St. Patrick that he supposedly prayed when he was facing his battle. And so I took those words and um, crafted an, a new song. And I wanted to do a video of the song in Ireland. And so I met a videographer in Ireland who was very talented. And uh, he listened to the song and I just said, do whatever you wanna do, what do you see? And he saw a battle, isn't that interesting? And he said, I, I, I'm picturing um, a battle between medieval sword fighters 
and a child in the midst of the battle um, who has no idea what's going on around him. So that's how it started.